Okay guys, welcome to my uh, quick tutorial which is just going to show you how you can create screen areas like this. Now I've done some previous ones in Photoshop which use uh, the vanishing point which is extremely powerful, it gets proper perspective in. Um, but when you're trying to prepare something prior to having the final design ready, uh, this tutorial may be a better route. This actually uses a smart object which is a square screen and then you can place any artwork into it later and it will automatically put it into perspective for you. So the, just to give you an idea of the kind of core functionality in here, um, you'll see that I have a Google, sorry, not Google, an LG Nexus 4 phone, uh, which I have created um, a background for. I've got a bit of a gradient on to darken it towards the bottom. I have the phone itself with a mask, complete with a mask. And then finally, I don't know why I've called it something, I think it's LG. Finally, I have uh, a screen composite of it. So you can see that this is um, 768 by 1280 on this particular phone. And the really cool thing about this is what I've got here is a smart object, which if I double click on, it will open in a new window. It is basically a Photoshop document within a Photoshop document. And you will see that this is 768 by 1280. So you can actually work to scale, pop your screens into this file. For example, if I hide it and save, and then close that down, when we return, it's going to put in a blank. So all we would do in future is go in, paste our artwork in, save it, close, and it visualizes it okay so I'm going to show you basically how to set up a document like this so that you can create these kind of prototypes and very quickly and rapidly deploy your own screen designs assets etc onto the phone okay um, what I'm going to do is we're going to do it uh, with an iPhone 6 plus I'm just going to zoom out a little bit because I'm working at a lower resolution you'll notice I'm working in Photoshop CS6 but all these sort of functionality works pretty much from about CS3 onwards, and if you've got Creative Cloud, that's no worries. There uh, shouldn't be a great deal of difficulty or difference um, if you're uh, working on a later version. So what I did for this was I started out by getting the uh, PR shot, just to show you the layers that we have here. So, actually, what I'll do first is we start with this PR shot which is free download from Apple um, then basically we prepare this as a template we mask out one of the phones the 6 plus in this case uh, we drop in a background we even put some reflections over the screen and then we create the smart object so that we can paste any kind of screen into it in this case it's just a, a captured screen from the phone itself uh, but you could replace it with anything. So I'm going to take you through that process. So just hide all these layers. So we start out by downloading uh, this file, which is available free on Apple's own website. They have a load of PR shots for virtually all their products. Uh, so you can go online, search for a particular product, and download the PR shot. So in this case, I have um, an iPhone 6S and a 6S Plus. Okay. Um, I didn't grab one when the 6 was around, so these are 6X Pluses. They're identical, as far as I can tell, apart from the touchscreen aspect, which doesn't affect what we're doing here. So I take that image, and I copy it, and then I get rid of the 6, because I don't want the 6, I just want the plus, um, like so. And just select and delete. And then what I do is I use the pen tool. You could go around it with a... Uh, polygonal lasso etc but because it is such straight lines and nice smooth round corners what I chose to do was create a path and this path um, I drew using the pen tool by just clicking and dragging if you're not familiar with the path tool it's too much to fit into this tutorial it's extremely powerful for making selections like this the main advantage is you can modify it at any point later on. Once I have that path, I double clicked and saved it. Normally when you draw a path, it will be a temporary path, and as soon as you deselect, etc., 
it can be deleted. So you double click and name it. So you can see we can actually have that inside this document. So we can select that path, go to the bottom here, and there's a little um, dotted circle which is load path of selection. Now you won't be able to see the little tool tip because it's just off my screen. And if you click that, you'll see that it'll make that into a selection. So my next phase, I always like to copy layers um, when I'm working like this, was to copy the layer and then use the mask tool at the bottom of the layers palette, which basically masks it out. So I now have no background, I haven't deleted anything. If the mask is not right, if one of the buttons over sticks or something like that sticks out, or I didn't get one of the corners right, the beauty of this is I'm using a, a mask, so I can go in and edit that mask at any point. The mask is telling uh, Photoshop any area that's black, hide, and any area that's white, show. It also allows me to do things like soften it if I wished, if I didn't want it quite so Harder mask, I could go in and feather it by a tiny bit, which would just soften it a tiny bit. Okay, so if you haven't used mask again, probably follow one of my other tutorials for now. So there's my phone um, masked out, it's going to move it up and we'll put the background in. Now, because I was dealing with a gold version in this case, I decided to pick a bit of the gold and kind of just tint a grey, create a warm grey. And inside here I've got the warm grey and I've also got a bit of a gradient. I've decided to darken it slightly at the top, which just emphasises the top slightly visually. Again, I want people to sort of be drawn to what content is on the screen. So I can now take my masked phone here and I can do things like rotate it. Uh, to put it at an angle that I desire, etc. Okay, so you can arrange it in a way if you don't want it totally straight, square, you could leave it square. I'm just going to hide this one. And we've got one that basically we did earlier. It is exactly the same, except that I've already uh, pinned the corners of a screen, etc. So I'm going to show you how I did that next. So what I'm going to do is, I've inside this document, I've also got a screen grab, which literally comes from an iPhone 6 Plus. So it is kind of, uh, let me just, Tell you it is 1920 by 1080. Okay, and that's the resolution of the 6 plus, as we can see in here. Oops, wrong one. So 6 plus is 1920 by 1080 at 401 pixels per inch. So basically I created a new document at that resolution, and then I would work in that when designing my screen. And then all I do is copy that screen and paste it into here. Okay. So what I'm going to do at the moment is just hold down Command or Control and click on the screen icon to just select that. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard and we're just going to get rid. Okay. Next task is, because I obviously when I built this initially, I made sure I was working to the right resolution, but I'm just going to show you how I did it before I brought the screen in. So I'm going to start by actually creating a blank. I can fill it with any color. Uh, in this case, it's put a light blue because that happens to be my foreground color since last time I used it. And I'm just going to paste like so. Okay, so I've got that area defined. It's the right resolution. I don't have anything, but it's basically a blank. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the layer uh, palette. I'm just going to have to pull this off. You can see this on yours. And I'm going to say to it, convert to smart object. What a smart object is, effectively, you can see it here, is it's like a document within. It's a kind of a clever object. You can do things with this, but you can continue to edit that document. Normally, I use smart objects when I'm pasting Illustrator content. But in this case, I'm basically creating a Photoshop document within. So I'm just going to call it Screen Area. And I'm going to double click. And you'll see, you get this dialogue saying, after editing, you must save if you want to commit the changes, otherwise they'll be ignored. And it only will be made when you return to this document. That's basically what it's saying in a nutshell. Let's put my layers palette there. Um, so now I've got this area. This is a separate document. As you can see, it's called Layer 3 PSD at the moment. So I can give this a name. Let's call it Screen Area. Obviously, if I had called it something else first, it would have updated 
uh, my document here because I, I hadn't renamed it when I made it into a smart object it's just called it that. It doesn't bother me either way because I copied the screen to the paste uh, clipboard beforehand I'm going to just paste that in and I can hit save and I'm just going to hit control uh, close which is command W or control W okay you can see that that has now updated that smart object so instead of being a flat blue area it is now going to be a screen just again to show you that it is a separate document you can double click open it again and in this case I'm going to hide it go back to the blue and hit save and close again returning to my original document it'll update so a really cool thing about this is in theory you can work collaboratively with other people and you can do the mock-up while somebody else is still working on the screens for example okay it also allows you to set your document ready so that at any point when you've got to present to a client you can just drag in copy in your new content and it will automatically fix it so I'm going to zoom in now and what I'm going to do is make this fit screen area I'm going to go to edit and free transform and then I'm going to hold down the command key on the Mac control key on the PC that allows me to grab the individual corners rather than have the whole object scale I'm just going to move these negotiate them into position so clicking control uh, sorry command or control each time before clicking on a corner allows me to grab the corners individually. So I'm basically pinning the corners. When I'm happy, hit enter. And I just check that I've got a fairly good margin. Okay, slightly out at the top, so I'll hit control T again. And I'll just nudge it across. And hit enter. So that's pretty much bang on. Okay. Uh, the better you get this, then obviously the better the result at the end. If I was going to be really nitpicky, I would say that this one is possibly a bit low. So I might come in and just modify that a tiny bit. Okay, so there's my screen area. I'd want to save the document now. Uh, for purposes of saving time, I'm not going to bother. And then obviously now, if I double click, it just looks like I've changed the shape of the mask. But because this is a smart object, when I restore my screen inside the smart object and save it and close, it automatically distorts the whole object to the shape. So you can see now the screen looks bang on, perfect in perspective. Okay. So once you use this, if you use a smart object, it is a super clever way of being able to define um, an area and have it update automatically. It's particularly powerful when you're making mock-ups like this. I could show a client's website how it would be how it would appear responsively on a, a phone and might have the laptop in the background, etc. Uh, it's very powerful, very quick to use once you've set one up. Um, so final thing might be if it doesn't look, you know, it looks nice and clean and you can see the screen zone, but it maybe doesn't look like it's not behind glass. So the final touches are I add a bit of a reflection. Uh, so what I've got here is basically I have painted some lines across the canvas like this. And then I have held down control or command, clicked on the phone screen area that we've already pinned. That's the area we want. And I've basically used that to generate a mask. Okay, so that means the reflections will show uh, where the screen is now. If this weren't a white phone, if this were a black phone, I'd probably see some reflections on it and I'd want to make sure that my reflections on the screen match that. But in this case, it just helps kind of embed and then this is completely controllable in terms of how much reflection I want to have. I could have just a hint or I can even go a bit stronger. Okay, And the beauty, as I say, is at any point now, this is, um, obviously I hear you're viewing it at 100%, uh, so I can't quite fit it on, but you can see how pin sharp it is because the resolution is, is awesome on the original image and also on here. Uh, but ultimately, as you can see, final touch is I add a shadow uh, behind and we're done. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, keep an eye out for my other tutorials and I'll see you back here uh, for something else very shortly.